I remember going into the first grade at Morrill Heights School in Jeff City, and we had a woman come in that she had on this bright colored dress and a hat, and her name was Laura May Stewart, and she went to the chalkboard and she drew an elf sitting underneath a mushroom. I was just so amazed at what she did, and I knew that I wanted to be an art teacher from the time I was in the first grade. I don't know that I ever really wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be an art teacher. And the artist kind of fell in with being an art teacher. I live out in the middle of 23 acres on the Niagara River. I go to the river almost every day. This place, it's quiet. You don't hear any road noise when you're outside. It's totally quiet. You're with your own thoughts all day long out here. This is a wonderful place to be for an artist. I love pottery first, but I also love to draw. I'm a sketchbook fanatic. I think that a person that is, claims to be an artist should have a sketchbook with them at all times, and I do. I like acrylic painting, and I, and I paint fast. I lack the patience to do something that takes three or four weeks to do. I just lack that patience. I like to watercolor. I like laying the watercolors down and seeing them flow and run and, and because you have so little control, well, anyway, I don't, in watercolor. But I like what I come up with with watercolor and I feel pretty happy about that. I love doing calligraphy and anytime I do an art show, I take my calligraphy with me and when the little kids are coming by my booth, I write their name in calligraphy on a little piece of paper for them and I say, now you gotta hold that flat until it dries. And so they walk off holding that flat and they don't touch my pots. But I love calligraphy because of what you think when you're writing down sayings. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth, breadth, and height that my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I write that stuff down and it's all over my house so I can think about it. Well, my first love is pottery. I love, I love digging clay out of the creek. I love wedging it. That's the donkey work where you're thinking all the time and wedging and getting the air bubbles out. And sometimes you can hear them pop and you're thinking about what you're gonna make. So I think, okay, am I gonna make cups today? Yeah, so I, I slice off a piece about that thick and then I cut it into perfect little squares. And I know that I'm gonna make cups out of that. Now how the cups turn out is anybody's guess. I get the clay centered and I pull it up and make the cylinder, the normal cylinder that everybody makes. And from there on, I don't know, am I gonna bulge the bottom out? Yeah, why not? Well, because I've kind of thrown it off center anyway, I might as well bulge the bottom out. So I'll do that, and then, oh yeah, the top is way off. So let me just cut that off. Now it's a little shorter than what I intended. Oh well, I'm still having fun. So I just keep going, and, um, and I make four cups. I can't ever make the same thing twice. And then I trim the bottoms of them, and then I pull handles and put on there. And then after I've pulled the handles, then I start carving. I never know what I'm gonna carve until I make the first mark. I've got a little, little container of tools, and I look in there and, hmm. So I have one tool I love the most, so I pick that one out, and once that's in my hand and I feel what it feels like in my hand, and this cup is leather hard, I, st I start carving and just make a mark. That's a good mark. And then I just make another mark. Yeah, that works. Oh yeah, this shape looks like it needs something that goes around, and so I'll go around it. And by the time I'm done, I really fall in love with the pot. I just love the way it looks. After their bisque fired and they've survived one firing, they didn't blow up in the kill, then I put glaze on them. I hate glazing. I hate glazing so much that I put it off for a long time. I wait until I have a whole lot of pots to glaze before I glaze. So I get all the cups glazed on the outside, wiped off, keeping the glaze that I've wiped off. And that way when I start again, I still have all that glaze. I haven't wasted it. I'm pretty frugal about that. And so I won't fire the kill unless it's completely full. So once the kill is completely full, and I'm talking full, then I fire it. No potter ever commits suicide with a glaze kill to unload. You have to, you have to go out there and, and wait and wait and wait until it's cool enough to crack it open just a little bit and let it vent. 
Boy, when you open that up and you see the, all those pots that you spent so much time on, they came out perfect. You come in the house and you open up the Glenlivet and have a shot. <laughs> I'm Mary Ganey. I'm the middle child of Kenneth and Edna Huffman, and I am a potter, teacher, artist, writer, poet, and wild woman. <laughs>